Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday I was speaking to a gentleman in the, in the city when we went to preach. And um, he asked me, he asked me, um, do you all um, play music in the church? I said, no. He said, why? I said, you know, many Christians there have been captivated by the music. They move because of the music. They stretch arms and you see water running down their faces because of the music. And they worship and you see them moving because of the music. But let the music stop. I say, as soon as the music stops, they stop exactly to the music. How, what, whatever position they are, they stop together the music. He said, ah, I understand, you know. Because he told me what, when he listened to gospel music, you know, he cried. He literally cried. He just cried. He just cried. So you see what music does. Music does. And I said to him, you know, after having this, this, this grand worship, you know, the musicians, they are tired. They worship him, they are tired. They had sleep. They had sleep. And now, now it's time for the word. They had sleep. And the word is more important. Not that worship is not good, but the word is more important. So if you worship for an hour, well, give the word for two hours. He said, okay, now I understand you. He said, now I understand you. And he shook his head. And he said, now I understand you. You make sense. That's true. That is true. So we are not moved because of music. Because when you see that band, that tambal start hitting, that bass hitting, even if you don't want to rock, you will rock. You will nod your head. If you don't want to dance, you will, your, 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 your feet will do that. You know, you will move the foot. You will dance to the music by your foot. Huh? You will dance. You will nod your head. You will nod the head because you, you hear in the book, 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 and you're moving by it. But as soon as it stop, you stop. We are not moved by music. We thank God for that. But we are moved by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the only the word that can truly deliver us. And truly save us. So we should be moved by the word. Our savior. We should only be moved by the word. Do not take me wrong that worship is not. Is not, it's bad. It's good to worship. It's good to worship. But listen to me. Do not be moved. By the musical instruments. Do not be moved by the musical instruments. And if you are moved by the musical instruments. You are in trouble. You are in trouble because you have been captivated by that. You are, it, it attracts you. It attracts you. So don't be moved. Don't be moved by the musical instrument, but be moved by the word of God. Because when the word of God enters your heart, as soon as it enters, it vibrates your body. And immediately, your mind begins to transform. Your mind begins to transform. The word begins to work on your mind instantly. And your mind begins to transform. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that you have made your word available to us in the name of Jesus Christ. What a mighty God. What a loving God. What a glorious God. What a wonderful God we serve in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, so many times he spared us and he's still sparing us. Many times he has spared us and still Pierre is sparing us. Now, many of us testify that he saved us from that accident. He saved me from drowning. I remember. But what about what I don't know? What about what we don't know he saved us from? We all came here safely. Who knows what could happen? Who knows what he saved us from? That we are here safely. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Make the word of God a priority in your life. Make the word priority in your life. And if you make your word, the word of God priority in your life, then nothing will that comes your way, you will fly it away. Anything that comes your way, you will fly it away. As, soon, as long as the word of God is priority in your life, anything that comes between you and the word, get rid of it. Do not waste time. Do not waste time. Allow it to drag that it would catch you. Instantly get rid of it. Thank you, Lord.
thank you, Jesus. We are just admonition and we think giving you that admonition. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we go into the word of God now. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We thank him. We honor him. We glorify him. We give it to him today. It's not ours. It is not ours. It is not ours. We cannot steal the Lord's glory. We cannot steal the Lord's honor. It is the Lord's. And if it's the Lord's, then we need to give it to the Lord. And that's what we did. We gave it to him. It is his own. Thank you, Lord. No, now what he gave to us now is his word. So we are going to his word now. That's what he gave to us. All right? So he gave us the word. So we are going to the word now. And we are going to the book of um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ made many promises to us. Many promises. And, and every one of us can, can testify that, that he kept his promise. Towards us, he has kept his promise. He has kept it. We can testify today. We can boast today. Why? Because the Lord has never, he has never revoked any one of his promises. He has kept every one of his promises. Every one of his promises, he has kept it. He has kept it. That's why we testify today. And we boast of him today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. He promised never to leave nor forsake us. And many Christians, many, this is the most famous promise that they know. Promise. And if you ask them, you say, well, my father, he promised me. He promised never to leave nor forsake me. This is a promise he gave. He gave this promise. He gave this promise. And he will never leave nor forsake us. But he gave us so many other promises. I just want to touch on only just four of his promises. I want to touch, touch on four of his promises that he gave to us. In spite of who you are, in spite of who we are, he has given us promises. And we need to understand, and we need to understand that he has given us promises, not just to leave, not to leave us, not forsake us. Not just that. But what about when we find ourselves in difficult situations? What about when we find ourselves in, in compromising situations, in hardship, in challenge, in temptations? What do we do? What do we do? So we're going to understand something this morning. It's for all of us. We're going to, we, we're going to understand something this morning. All right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 18. Uh, we take it from verse, verse 24. All right? We will take it from verse 24. Ezekiel 18 and verse 24. Very important, children of God. Very, very important. Verse 24 says, But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abomination that the wicked man does, shall he live? This is a question here, isn't it? This is a question that he's asking through the prophet Ezekiel. This is a question he's asking. Shall he live? Shall he live? And we will see what the answer is. We will see what the answer is because the word of God is life. The word of God is truth. And the Lord does not hide his word away from us. Everything he says, he does. Everything he says he does. He hides nothing from us. Absolutely nothing from us. For the word of God says, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many find it. He did not hide it from us. It is not hidden from us. And it also says that narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life and view finding it. He's not lying to us and tell us only, only, um, only the few find. No. He helps us to understand the road is narrow. The way is narrow. The broad, the broad way. Many find in it. And this is the truth. It's the truth, children of God. It is the truth. But when a man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to the abomination that the wicked man does, shall he live? You know what the, you know what the word of God says about sin or unrighteousness? 
those who practice unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God, will not inherit his kingdom. So if you're thinking about wickedness is not a sin, he said the practice of unrighteousness, wickedness, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So therefore we have to turn away from all manner of sin, all manner of unrighteousness. We need to turn away from this and turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. We need to turn to Jesus. And the question is, shall he live? Shall he live? God will help you in that situation, children of God. In that situation. I am saying that situation because that situation will come one day. And that situation has a name. So I'm not sure in what way or what form it will, that situation will come. But a situation will come. A situation will come. And remember that God will help you. Remember that God will help you in, in, in that situation. So do not turn away from, from, your own, from your righteousness and turn to the wicked. Do not turn away from righteousness and turn into unrighteousness, children of God. Do not turn. Do not turn away. For the word of God says, and does not, according to the abomination that the wicked man does, shall he live? The question is, shall you live? If you turn away from righteousness and you turn into unrighteousness, into wickedness, should you live or shall you live? This is the question that has been asked. Written by the prophet Ezekiel. This is the question. And we all can ask ourselves that question. Iniquity. Those who practice iniquity will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the word of God. And nobody can change it. No one can change the word of God. No one. No one can change it. But that's why we have to abide with it. Is either we for it or we against it. We either be for it or against it. But we cannot change it. We cannot change it. We cannot be neutral. It's not a game. It's not a spot game you're playing. That you get you, you, you get one one and then you, you 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 equalize. No. It's not a game. You either for or against. No free ways about it. It's period. You either for or against it. That's what the word of God says. But God will help you in that situation. He will help you in that situation. Do not give up, children of God. Do not give up. When you find yourself in, 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 that, in that practice of unrighteousness, on, on, on call upon Jesus. He is able to help you. He will help you in that situation. In that situation, I'm not sure what, what, what would be the outcome of it, but he will help you. He will help you. I'm not sure what shape or what form it comes, but it will come. And when that situation comes, remember, God will help you. God will help you. So rely on God. Rely on God and call upon that great name. In the name of Jesus, he will help you. In that trouble, he will help you. In the practice of unrighteousness, do not remain in it. In the practice of sin, do not remain in it. Call upon that name Jesus and he will help you, children of God. He's he will help you. With man, it is not possible, but with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible with God. He will help you. So do not remain in your iniquity. Do not remain in the practice of unrighteousness. Get out of that. Flee from it. Desist yourself from it. Desist from it. Cease from it. And do good. And do it at all times. Do good and do good at all times to everyone. To everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What are you asking about in what way he can help me? Oh, well, you, you want to know in what way he can help you. Oh, well, let's turn to the psalmist, Psalms um, 47. Let's turn to Psalms 47 and let's see what way he can help us. Psalms 47. 
Psalms 47. You know, a lot of persons out there, they know when you, when you speak to them, they want proof. They want proof. And there is no way you can go to the courts without proof, without evidence. You must prove to the court that this man or this woman, you must prove to the court that this man or this woman, so that he or she can be found guilty or not. It's not by word of mouth and say, oh, I found this man with an unlicensed firearm or with crack cocaine. You must prove it to the court. That means the evidence must be presented to the court. And our evidence is the word of God. The evidence is the word of God. That's why when you meet people, don't debate with them. When you speak to them, do not debate. But rather, run to the word. Run to the word of God. And you see how the word of God will subdue them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalms 47 and verse 5. Psalms 47 and verse 5. We just take it from verse 4. All right. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire, desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. You hear that? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring it to pass. What shall he bring to pass? Your way. Bring it to him. Commit your way to the Lord. And if you commit your way of iniquity to the Lord, guess what? He will help you. He will help you. And if we go to, to, to verse 5. Here yeah, yeah, it is in verse 5. In verse, um, verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Verse 37, um, chapter 37 and verse 1. Hear yeah, what the word of God says. Written by the psalmist. Alright? Do not fret because of evildoers. Huh? Or do not worry because of evildoers. Nor be envious of their works. Do not be envious of the works of evildoers. Why? 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 For they shall soon be caught down like the grass. They shall be soon caught down like the grass. Have you ever passed by the roadside and, and, and you see the grass that the people caught? Whenever the vehicle passes, it just, it just drives them away. It just drives them away. It just drives them away. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of their iniquities. Of their iniquity. Do not be envious of the iniquity of evildoers. Are we getting that? Are we getting that? So, so when, you be, when you say to yourself, but wickedness is not a sin. No! He said, do not be envious of it because they shall be cut off like the grass. And soon, hear what the word of God says, soon, soon, they shall be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Withered as the green herb. Trust in the Lord. And do good, verse 3 says. Trust in the Lord and do good, children of God. Do not do good today and tomorrow you do it. You. No, do good and do good at all times and to everyone. To everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what keeps us alive today, the word of God. That guides us into all truth. It guides us into all truth. The word of God guides us into all truth. This is what that have us, keeps us away from unrighteousness, from our iniquity, and have us here today is the word. My encouragement to us is to be a part of the word of the word. Be one with the word. Be one with the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God will help you in that situation. That situation, I'm not sure. I don't know what that situation is. You know that situation. You know that trouble. You know what you are going through. You know it. You know that you are faced. Call upon that great name, Jesus. And he will help you. He will help you in that situation. In that situation. Everybody has a situation. 
in that situation now, your situation not might be my situation, and, and my situation may not be your situation. And every one of us may have a different situation. But I am saying to us today, in that situation, God is able to help us. All we need to do is commit our way to him, and he will help us. That's what we need to do. Commit our way to him. Do not remain in your iniquity. Do not remain in your iniquity. Do not remain in it. Because the word of God tells us, do not be envious of the works of the evildoers. Do not nor be and nor envious of it of their iniquities. Do not. He said, Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. They shall be soon cut down like the grass. On Thursday, next week. Oh, this week, first day. When all you come here on, sun, on Sunday, all you'll see. All you see when all those grass rooted all, all you see how they start fading. They'll have no life. They will start fading. Respect the word of God. Respect the word of God. Do not play with the word of God, children of God. Do not play with the word. For the word is life and the word is power. Do not play in that word. So he can help you. And he has proven to us that he can help us. All we need to do is commit our way to him. And he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. It's not just, I will never live nor forsake. He plenty of other promises that he gave us. And we are not aware of it. And then when we find ourselves in, in, in difficult situation and, and compromising situation, then we don't know where to turn and what to do. And all we remember is, oh, God said he will never leave nor forsake me. But he gave so many promises. And it's very important. It's very important to note. It's very important to note. He said he will help you. And not just help you. In that situation, he will stand by you. He will stand by you. You, you will feel the presence of God. He will stand by you in that situation. That trouble. I don't care what the circumstance. I don't care what it is. But the Lord said, I will stand with you. I will stand with you. That's what he says. I will stand with you. And if you want, if you want proof, like what he said, that I will help you, then you know the word of God is always here to help us. He's always here to help us. He said, I will stand with you. It doesn't matter what you are going through today. It doesn't matter what you are going through today. On site, Zoom, YouTube. It doesn't matter what you are faced today. The Lord will stand with you. He made that promise to stand with you. And he will stand with you today in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a promise that he made. All we need to do is to live the life pleasing unto God. That's all. That's all he wants us to do. Is to live the life pleasing unto him. Pleasing unto him. That's why he's preparing us. The word of God is preparing us for the end. And you know that we are in the end time. We are in the end time. And it's very important to be prepared for the end time. It's important to be prepared for the end time. So turn away from all your iniquities. Turn away from the practice of unrighteousness. We are saying turn away from sin. And turn to Jesus. That's what we are saying to you. Turn to Jesus. The offer and finisher. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and Omega. Our Savior. Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I will stand. Huh? God will stand by you. Stand by the word of God. And if God is standing by you, you as well, we as well, let's stand in the word of God. Let's stand in it. Because he said, I will stand by you. That's what the psalmist helps us to understand by the word of God. He will stand with you. And in 2 Timothy 4, let's, let's, go, let's go to 2 Timothy you see, I don't want to just come and, and just talk for me to say I, just, I bragging. I love bragging. I love talking. But also, with all the brag and talk, I always like the scripture. I always have a scripture to back me up. I always have a scripture to back me up. I remember last uh, two verses back when we went to the prison and, and I was speaking to this guy in the block and, oh no, this guy is, is oh no, forgiveness and he, he do this and that. And when I, when I brought the word of God to him, after I finished bragging, 
After I finished bragging, I brought the word of God to him. I opened the Bible and I showed him for himself. And he bowed. And at a certain time, he said, he called pastor. Pastor, come. Come a while. He said, you broke me down. I didn't break him down. The word of God broke him down. It's not me. Because I was speaking to him. I was speaking. But when I gave him the proof, the word of God subdued, subdued this man. It's not me. Me on my own, I have no power. I am nothing without the word. I'm nothing. And we are nothing without the word. Don't fool ourselves. Don't fool ourselves. The word of God promised to stand by us in that situation. I don't care what that situation is. You know what that situation is. He promised to stand. And 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. We start from verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Are we all there? Alexa verse 14. Alexander the copper smith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. Now listen to that. Every man will be rewarded according to his works. Whether you do good or bad. You do good, you will be rewarded for doing good. You do bad, you will be rewarded for doing bad. You will be rewarded for doing bad. So let's take that again. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be, must, you also must be aware of him. For he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me. No one stood with me, but all forsook me. Forsook me. May it not be changed against them. Charge, sorry, charge against them. But first, yeah, what verse 15, four, um, 17 says, which is our proof text. Verse 17 says, But the Lord stood with me. The Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Well, listen to this. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So you see that? In that situation, children of God, God will stand with you. In that situation, at that time, friends cannot help you. The friends cannot help you. The friends that you hang out with cannot help you. Your colleagues cannot help you. They cannot help you. They cannot help you in that situation. Only God can help you in that situation. Only God can stand by you in that situation. A matter of fact, in that situation, your friends will try to put you in the problem. Your friends will try to put you in the problem and get out. God will help you in that situation. Live that life pleasing unto God, children of God. Live your life pleasing unto Jesus. He promised to stand by you in spite of what the trouble is. Your day-to-day -day trouble, your problem, that sickness, that disease. It doesn't matter what the circumstances is. Say, I will stand by you. I will stand by you. And if the Lord is saying that, I, I will stand by you. We ought to stand by him as well. Not to run away from him. Because we are, we are practicing on unrighteousness. Because we practice on righteousness that we are going to run away from God. No! Do not run away from him. But rather, run to him. Run to him. He will receive you with arms wide open. He will receive you with arms wide open. That's what he wants. He wants you to come as you are. That he will receive you. His arms, his arms are wide open waiting for you, children of God. He's waiting for you. Do not run away. Do not turn away. But rather, come to Jesus. Do not turn away from Jesus. If you want to turn away, well, turn away from the practice of unrighteousness. 
Turn away from your iniquities. Turn away from this one and turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. He will help you. I don't care who you are today. I don't care who, how, how rich you are. I don't care how wealthy you are. You who are watching us live via YouTube. And you believe that because of your wealth that you are all that. Because of that money you have, you acquire that you are all that. Because of all of these big businesses that you have, you are all that. But one day, if you do not have Jesus Christ, one day, your very knees must bow and your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to what verse 16 says. At my first defense, no one stood with me. And we can testify that no one stood with us in that situation. That situation that we have been going through. No one stood with us. No one, because no one could help us. No one could help us. But only one. It is Jesus. Only one can help us in that situation. And that one promised to stand with us. He promised to stand with us. It's not, your, it's not your friends that promise to stand with you. Oh, you know, if you get yourself in trouble, I will stand with you. Find yourself in trouble and you see how much they will stand with you. Say they won't bail for you. With all the money they have, and all the wealth they have, and all the, all the certificate of titles they have. See if they will stand with you. See if they will stand with you, especially if you are a character. Or they know you as a character. See if they will stand with you. Just see. Because they know that you are capable of running. You are capable of escaping. And if you, and if that individual runs, you know you're, whatever you bail that person out with, you lost that. Unless you can come up with this large sum of money, you lost that. Just try it. And we will see. But no one stand with me in my defense. No one, no one stood with me. But all forsook me. All forsake us. They forsake us all because we're in trouble. We're in trouble. They know they cannot help us. They run. They left us in our mess. They left us in trouble. They left us in that problem. They left us with headache. And we are looking for a solution out. And we are depending on man. We are depending on man. The word of God says in the book of Jeremiah 17 and verse 5, it says, Curse is a man whose trust is in man. Curse. But it also helps us to understand that uh, in verse 7 that blessed is the man whose trust is the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. So do not remain in your iniquity. Do not remain in the practice of unrighteousness, children of God. Do not remain. But rather, flee from it and turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. And we are going back to the book of... Um, Ezekiel. We are going back to the book of Ezekiel. We are going back to the book of Ezekiel. And we take it from verse 24 again. Ezekiel 18 and verse 24. But when a righteous man turns away from unrighteousness and commits iniquity, commit wickedness, huh? and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done, all right, shall not be remembered. Why? So it doesn't matter how much good you do. In your life. It doesn't matter how much money you put in church. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you remain in unrighteousness. Listen to what the word of God says. Listen to this. For all the righteousness which he has done. Shall not be remembered. It will not be remembered children of God. It will not be remembered. Why? Because the unfaithfulness. The unfaithfulness of which he is guilty. And the sin, remember, hear this, the sin which he has committed, because of them, he shall die. It's not me saying it. 
the Holy Spirit speaking through me. He shall die. So do not believe that all the good you do, at the end of it, will, you will be remembered for all this. If you remain, remember what I said. If you remain in your unrighteousness, if you remain in sin, if you remain in it, he shall surely die. Surely die. That's why we must thank God for his word every day. Every day. That's the truth. The truth. And, and the truth is, you know, you know, many people go write books. And they use our very guide. They use the Bible to write different books. And turn things around. Twist it around. To fabricate lies about our Lord Jesus Christ and his word. That's what it does. And many falling for it. Many believe in it. Not realizing that they go through our book. The Bible. The Holy Bible. And they fabricate lies and turn things around and then they come and give it to us and then we still buy them imagine imagine we still buy those books when we have the one and only genuine book that has life and death blessing and cursings is the holy bible hallelujah thank you jesus verse 25 says yet you say the way of the lord is not fair Ah, Magwesa. Somebody say Magwesa. Ah, you mean to tell me the word of God has guided us through our life. He has guided us through our life. The Lord says, see, I have said before you, I have called heaven and earth as a witness. So heaven and earth is God's witness. See, I have said before you, life and death, blessing and curses. He said, choose life and live. So whatever we choose is, our, is, is, is we who choose. We have a choice. We have a choice to choose. So if we choose to remain in, 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 our, in our sin, in, our, in, in unrighteousness, if we, if, we, if we choose to remain in our iniquities, in wickedness, that's the, our choice, then that's the choice that we make. And then we go and say, oh, you know, when God takes action against us, oh, you know, God is not fair. Ah! First 25 again. Yet you say the word, the way of the Lord is Lord is not fear. Oh no. Hear yeah, now, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fear, and yours and your way which are not fear? When the righteous turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, commits wickedness, commit sinful activities, commit unrighteousness, listen to this, listen to this, and dies in it. It is because of his, of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. So you die because of your iniquities. You die because of your iniquity. But God promised to help us. Isn't that so? He promised to help us. It is not the will of God that anyone should perish, but all should come to repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are one that practices unrighteousness today, or you are in iniquity today, repent in the name of, of Jesus Christ. Repent. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. So repent. It's all to come to repentance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He promised to help and even stand with us. Stand with us in that trouble. As long as we remain faithful to God, he will stand with us. He will stand with us when that situation arises. When that situation knocks on your door or on our door, who will stand for us? Who is going to stand against us? Our friends will run from us. Our neighbors will run from us. Our colleagues will run from us. But God promised never to leave, nor forsake us. He said, I will help you. I will not just help you, but I will stand by you. I will stand by you. They forsook us. But only the Lord stand with us. What a mighty God. 
What a glorious God we serve, children of God. What a loving God. What a loving God. And to tell me you are going to run from a glorious God. To tell me that you are going to run from a loving God. Ah, Magwisa. Ah. But one thing I want you to know. That God chastens those who he love. He chastens those he love. So if you believe that you are going to run from God, he will chase you. He will chase you. I remembered visiting a church. And um, here is this young man on, on clutches with a broken leg. With a broken leg. And um, I was minding my own business. And I'm hearing these two women at the back. They were speaking. They were speaking because the guy was a little higher up, further up. And they were at the back of me. And, you know, they were saying, but this man is so deep in the church. And, you know, his, his parents there, his family there. But he was so deep. And after, you know, he turned away. He ran from God. And he got himself in an accident where he almost lost his life. And since after the accident, he found himself back in the house of God. He chastened those we love. Some way, somehow, you will run back to the house of God. You will run back. Because that thing will cause you to run back to the house of God. That thing will cause you to run to Jesus. It will cause you. It will cause you to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God promised to keep. God promised and keep it. All his promises, he kept every one of his promises. And we all can testify today that he has never left us nor forsake us. Because we are finding ourselves in some situation where we, we, we could have lost our lives. Or where we could have been arrested. But because of God, and we can simply say that, because of God, he saved us. He delivered us. He helped us. He stand by us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Stand with God. I am saying stand with the word of God. And if you stand with the word of God, you will be mighty spiritually. You will be a mighty warrior spiritually. Stand with the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. I will hold you tight. Imagine. Hey. Imagine. I will hold you tight. God promised to hold us tight. Eh? Not just to help us and, and stand by us, but to hold you tight. Hold you tight. That you may not fall. I hold you tight. That's God holding you there. I hold you tight. He will hold you tight. He'll hold us tight that we may not stumble. You will hold us tight. So, so, so just think of yourself. Visualize yourself on, on the tallest coconut tree you have ever seen. You are on the top of there and you are watching down. You are watching down and, and, and all that is on your mind is if you fall, what will happen to you? But God said, I will hold you tight. He promised to hold us tight in that situation, in that trouble, in that sickness and disease. He promised to hold us tight. To hold us tight. I mean, God is doing so much for us. He has done so much and still doing so much and we still want to run away from him. Ah! Ah! You think that is fear? You think it is fear that we run away from him? Ah, Magwesa! Every man will be rewarded according to his works. What a man saw, that's what he reaped. That's what he reaped. What profit it is to you? Or what will it profit you? To remain in unrighteousness. Or to remain in your iniquity, in your wicked ways. And die and go to hell. You die and go to hell. What profit it is to you? Or what profit it will be to you? I'm speaking to us. What profit it will be? What profit? You know, if you want to live your life and you want to enjoy something, you, you live the best life that you can enjoy it. You live the best life that you can enjoy it. But when you live, when you live your life uh, according to the things of the world, there is one day, one day, one day they will depart from you. Oh, you will depart from it. One day. So much stabbing and killing in, in carnival. 
And you are there enjoying, you enjoying it, you jumping up, you, you drinking and you whining and you, you, you know, see how they expose our young children. They expose our young children for a few hours, two days. A few hours in two days. They have messed up our children. Messed up. They messed up. But you enjoy that sea for what? For a few hours, two days. Two days. Till next year again. Two days. But God promised to help us. He promised to stand by us. He promised to, to hold us tight. That we may not let go. You know, many let go because they cannot bear that burden. They cannot bear that burden, so they let go. The trouble is too much. The pain is too much. That the, 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 the pressure is too much. The stress is too much. So we let go. Many has let go. And as a result of letting go, it has caused them their lives. It has caused many their lives. Because they could not bear it. They could not bear it. But, but God knows that we can. He said, I will stand by you. And I will hold you tight. I will help you. I will stand by you and I will hold you tight that you may not stumble. I will hold you tight. And if you, if you, and, and even though you stumble, if you stumble, that I will hold you tight. I will help you. I will help you. I'll bring you up. And I hold you tight that you may withstand it. That you can bear it. I will hold you tight. I will hold you tight. I will hold you tight. You know, just yesterday on our way down after, after our invasion in the city, when we reached just Kenfield, opposite NP, from a distance, we, we encountered some traffic jam. And um, from a distance, I saw one guy coming, walking, hopping, hopping. And when he reached, you know, he just down. But when we reached close by, we realized it's an accident, a bike accident. A bike accident. But the pressure, the pain he had in the foot, he could not stand. He could not stand and he fell. He fell. And then he eased up a long while and he grabbed, he held onto the van and he eased up. And he, when he pulled up his pants, all I saw was a big hole. A big hole. He could not stand it. He could not stand it. But God said, I will hold you tight. He held on to that van. For hell, but God promised that He will hold us tight, children of God. He promised in the book of Isaiah 41. Let's go to Isaiah 41, where He promised, He made that promise to us. So tomorrow we can hold Him accountable on that promise He has made. We can hold God accountable for His promise. You, you know, you, you promise if I, if I get 100%, you will give me a lollipop. Ah, if I get this right, you promise. So hold him accountable by his promises. Hold him. <coughs> Isaiah 41. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God, children of God. What a glorious God we serve in the name of Jesus Christ. I will hold you tight. That's what he says. I will hold you tight. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Listen to this. Very important, children of God. Do not be distracted, fool. Do not be distracted, fool. If it's one time, it's to be focused. Listen to this. He says, fear not. Isaiah, a prophet, written through the word of, through Jesus Christ. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Hey! So when that trouble comes, he says, fear not, I am with you. So when you start crying, <laughs> he says, fear not, I am with you. Fear not. Do not worry. Do not cry. The Lord say, I am with you. I will hold you tight. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. He is your God. And he is your one and only, the most high God. I will strengthen you in time of that weakness. I will give you strength. 
When your mind begins to get weak, I will strengthen your mind. I will broaden your mind. I will open your eye. I will strengthen you. He promised to give us strength during that weakness. Yes, I will help you. It doesn't matter what. He said, I will help you. He will help us in whatever that situation is. You know what that situation is. Online, Zoom, site, YouTube. You know what that situation is that you are going through right now. You know that situation. God promised to help you. He promised to give you strength. He promised. He made that promise. But you, you, you must reset your mind and change your mind and know that you ought to live the best life. Please, Lord, to Jesus. You ought to. And if you have turned away, turn away from, from, from God, you need to run back. If you are one that turn away from unrighte- of, of your righteousness and turn to unrighteousness, turn back to Jesus. He's waiting. He's waiting, but do not keep him waiting too long. Do not keep him waiting too long. We are warning you. Do not keep him waiting too long. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Right hand has power. You see what he say? I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That right hand there is power. The right hand of God is power. He made these promises that he will never withheld from us. He will never withdraw those promises from us. He will never. What he says he will do, he accomplished. What the word of God says he will do, it always accomplished. It always. It always. He said, I will stand by you. I will help you. I will hold you tight. But in order to do all that, we need to be one with the word of God. We need to make ourselves one. We need to stand by the word. That when that situation comes, we know that the word is here to help us. But if we are too busy in, in, in unrighteousness, how are we going to get help? If we are too busy in, in the practice of unrighteousness, we will fall and we will fall hard. You will fall hard and you may not get up. You may not get up. But if you stand by the word of God, as he promised to stand with us, if you stand by the word of God, then you will be guided by the very word. You will be guided by the very word if you stand by the word of God. That's the truth. No one can change it. No one can change it. That's the truth. And it's the honest truth. And it's the genuine truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said in verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. The Lord is with you. Do not give up. Do not give up. You know, the Lord does never, he, he never gives up on his people. Always. We are the ones giving up on him. We are the ones giving up. We give up on him for what? For unrighteousness. For greed. Wickedness. Selfishness. Murder. Lies. Fornication. Adultery, just name it. Drunkard. We give him up for these things. These temporary things that destroys the body slowly. These temporary things. This thing that just lasts for a while. For a while. The word of God says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. Stand by the word of God, children of God. Stand by the word of God. He will stand by you. He will be with you. He will hold you with his righteous right hand. He will help you. He will hold you tight. This is promise that he made. He made these promises to us. He made these promises to each and every one of us sitting here today. Every one of us on Zoom, he made this promise to us. YouTube, wherever you are, he made these promises to us. We made these promises. And if he made these promises to us, uh, we should be eager to to stand by the word of God. We should be eager to stand by the word of God with boldness, with no fear, with no favor. With no fear and no favor to stand boldly by the word of God. 
Because he made, he, he, he made promises to us that, that he will keep every one of his promises. Every one of his promises, he will keep it. He will keep it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Stand by the word, children of God. Stand by the word. Stand by the word. Do you want the word to help you? You, must, you don't run from the word. Do not run from the word. How do you need help and you're running away from help? You, have to, you, you need to run to help. You need to run to help. And when you run to help, then, then you will get help. Imagine you want help and you're running away from help. How are you going to be helped? How? If you want help today, not by man, but by Jesus, you need to stand by the word. You need to stand by Jesus. Because Jesus is willing and is ready to stand by you in that situation, in that trouble. You know what it is. He's ready and he is standing by many, which, which many is not aware that he is standing with them. Many has suicide thoughts. And because of Jesus standing by them, they have not committed that suicide. Many is thinking wickedness. And because Jesus Christ is standing by them, beside them, they have not committed that wickedness, that murder, that fornication, that adultery, that robbery. They have not committed because God is standing. God is standing. And guess what? They are hearing something. They say, boy, something telling me, do it. Something do it. No, it's the Holy Spirit that is standing with you. The Holy Spirit is standing with you. So do not be confused when you're hearing, one mind telling me, do it. And one mind, no. If you know it is wrong, do not do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. And the one that is telling you, do not do it. If you know it is wrong, is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Live the life pleasing unto Jesus. One day we will call upon that great name, Jesus. Many doesn't have time to call upon that name. Many will not have time to call upon that name. Many will have time to call upon that name. But our appeal to you today, to not wait for when your back is against the wall. You, you, there is nowhere to turn. Nowhere to turn. You, you, you go left is wall. You cannot go anywhere. You go right is wall. You cannot go. You go back is wall. You go forward is wall. You look down, you cannot go down. You look up. And look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. Do not wait for when you are in that, in that compromising situation, that trouble. Do not wait for when the, the police get you arrested. You have been arrested by police. Do not wait for that situation. Do not wait when you are on the sick bed through an accident, through sickness and disease. Do not wait for that situation. Do not wait for that situation. Though our God is merciful, but do not wait for that situation because I am saying this to say that you may not have the time. I said I am saying that to say that you may not have the time. You may not have the time. Yeah, you are well and strong. You are in the, the house of God today. You are assembled in the house of God today. You are healthy. You are strong with your right frame of mind. Your clarity of mind. You are here today. Make that wise decision. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make that wise decision today or else too late shall be your cry. Too late shall be your cry. I thank God that he has delivered me from fornication. You know, that was, that was my life. Fornication was my life. Was my life. Fornication was my life. He might, I, I was a master. The master of fornication was me. Nobody could beat me. Nobody could beat me. No one. Not even one. Not one. Imagine, think of the world population. Oh, let's, okay, you know what? Think of the, our country population. And think I'm, I am the number one. Imagine. Think of I am the number one. Imagine. Hmm? Yeah. Think of it. The master. And here I am standing today. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we can declare it today in the name of Jesus Christ that we are washed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord promised that when he holds us, he will not let go. Hey, imagine. Imagine. The Lord promised, I will not let go. I will hold you tight. What you are saying, say, Lord, please, don't, don't let go. You, you want that tallest coconut tree that you're watching down. Please, do not let go. Lord, Lord say, now, I, I, I held on to you. I will not let go. But you are still saying, Lord, please, don't let go. Because you're the watch song. You're crying. Don't, don't let go. He promised not to let us go. He promised that when he helped us, and he stand by us and he hold us tight he promised that, that when he hold on to us tight that he will not let go today in the name of Jesus Christ he promised that he will not let go he promised that he will not let go your friends may let go children of God your family may let go your husband and wife may let go your children may let go your family may let go your colleagues may let go that boss may let go but Jesus will not let you go in the name of Jesus he promised, he promised he will not let go. He promised that he will not let go. We ought to live the life, the best life pleasing unto Jesus. He made so many promises to us. So many promises to us. I pray that we'll keep everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that we will live the best life pleasing unto Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It pays to serve the Lord. I will not let you. He said, I won't let you go. Though he have you tight, I will not let go. I will not let you go. You know when some people die in their, school, their, their, their spouse, he's called the person closer to them and call them. He call them, come and you know, and what you want to do is let, it's hold you. Hold you. After, hold you. And after you're feeling. Ah. We let go. But Jesus promised that when he holds you with his righteous right hand, he will not let go today, children of God. He said, I will not let go when I hold on to you in time of that trouble, in time of that sickness and disease, in time of that pain, in time of that problem. It doesn't matter what that sickness is. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter that circumstance. He said, when I hold you, I will not let go. I will not let go. That's what he promised us. I will not let go. But if you turn from righteousness and you turn to unrighteousness, say you will die. You will die. Who came more? Who came more? You will die. But he promised you also, we also must hold on and not let go. If our Jesus said that I will help you, I will stand by you. If he promised us that, he promised that he will hold us with his righteous right hand. And he said, I will not let go. We ought not to let go in the name of Jesus. We ought not to let go in the name of Jesus Christ. The Christian life is a nice life. It's a nice life with ups and downs. The Christian life is a nice life with little hurdles. But we ought not to let go. We expect that. It's a journey. We are treading to a journey that we, are willing, we will encounter ups and downs. We will encounter difficulties. We will encounter trouble. We will encounter pain. We will encounter little hurdles. We will encounter it. But are you going to let go? No, you cannot let go. You cannot give up. That trouble you are going with at your work, don't give up. Don't give up because of, of, of that trouble. Do not give up. Do not give up. Why? Because God promised. He said, I will not let you go. He promised that. He promised that. And we're going to see where he promised us. That he will not let go. 
All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So, people can't go and say, I, oh, you know, the preacher say, God will not let go. The preacher say, God will not let go. So, we can remain in our iniquity. Ah, God will not let go. Hey, we can enjoy the things of the world. Hey, we enjoy it. Hey, hey, God, you smoking, you drinking, you fornicating, you commit adultery. Hey, you destroying lives. Ah, yeah, hey, you involved in sorcery, all kind of things. And you saying God will not let go because you jump in. Hallelujah, God will not let go. Hallelujah, you jump because God will. You will die and go to hell. This is what you did to let go. If it's one time. My encouragement to you is to let go. Is to let go of unrighteousness. And hold on to Jesus. The offer and finisher. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10. Chapter 10 and verse 13. Hey. Do not let go, children of God. That's why we have been prepared. We have been prepared for the end time. You do not want to enter something that you don't know what you're entering. If you are going into something, all of us would know, like to know what we are going into. You want to know what you are entering. You want to know, is there any gain? Is there any profit? You want to know, is there any trouble? Is there any death? You want to know what you enter in. You want to know what you enter in. You know, a few years ago, I entered something I didn't know what I was entering. I lost six thousand dollars. I lost six thousand. I did not know what I was entering. I just entered. I just entered. I did not know. I lost six thousand dollars like. But one day, somebody is going to pay for that $6,000. One day, somebody is going to pay for that $6,000 if they do not repent. Somebody will pay for that $6,000. That $6,000 they are stolen from Jesus. They will pay one day. Somebody is going to pay for that. One day, somebody is going to pay for that. They will pay one day. They will pay. And imagine. Imagine is the law officers, the police. They stole my $6,000. Of course. They can have plenty of people. They can have plenty of people. They buy expensive cars. They be lousy. They can have plenty of people. But what profit it is to you? What profit is to you? I heard policemen cry. I heard police, I saw police cry literally, begging for their money. Okay, you know what? Holy five hundred dollars, but the six thousand, give it back to me. Ah, that gone. That gone. That gone. And I'm speaking to you. If you do not repent, one day you will pay. You know yourselves. You know yourselves, you police officers. You know yourselves. One day. If you do not repent now, one day you will pay for that. Because you rip people. You rip children of God. You rip sons and daughters of God. One day you will pay if you do not repent. I entered something which I was not aware of. That's why the word of God say, if any man, if any man desire to follow me, he must first put down his cross. Deny himself and follow me. That's what the word of God says. It is important to know what you are entering. It is important to know that the Christian life is the best life, but also there are ups and downs. It's important to know that. It's not going to be all well and good. It's not, it will not be all well and good as a Christian. No, you will find hurdles. You will find challenges. And that's why we ought to be prepared that you would know how to face them. When they comes. <coughs> First Corinthians uh, 10 and verse 13. And then I have one more scripture and come to conclusion. Verse 13 says, 
No temptation, no temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Hold on, children of God. Hold on. He promised to hold on. He promised when he holds you, he will not let go. You must hold on and not let go of the word of God. You must not let go. Hold on. Hold on. No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to a man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make, a w make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You may be able to bear the way that weight. He is always make a way of escape. And the only way of escape is through the word. That's the only way of escape. Through the word. Through the word. So if you believe that you, you are going to remain in your state, that state of unrighteousness, that state of iniquity, to have that mindset of wickedness, listen to me, and you believe that you are going to take another road, it doesn't matter what road you take. One day, if you do not repent, you will have it. You will have it. You will have it. If you believe that you can take another way. For there is a way that seems right to man. But at the end of the way is death. So if you believe that you are going to take another way because you are living the life not pleasing unto God. And you believe that you can take another way. You are heading the way of death. At the end of that way you will encounter death. You will encounter death. You will encounter it. You will encounter it. The Lord made promises to us. Not just to He said, He said, I will help you. I will help you. I will help you in time of need. Don't go and sell your body for help. I will help you in time of need. Don't go and steal. I will help you in time of need. I will help you. He promised. He promised that to help. He promised to stand with us in times of trouble. He made these promises and the promise will never go back to him void. He will stand by every one of the promises that he made. We ourselves, what is our promise to Jesus? Seeing that he has made so many promises and, and that we can come and boast that who God is. Uh, we boast that he, 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 he gave us this. Uh, he gave us that. Uh, he gave me that. Uh, he sent someone to give me that. Uh, he, he did this for me. What is our promise to him? What is our promise to him? This is the question that all of us should ask. Everyone on that is of our voice today should ask. What is my promise to God? He promised me so many things and he has kept every one of his promises. What is my promise to him? Ask yourself, what is my promise to God? Zoom, YouTube, on site, ask yourself. Do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed. But ask yourself, what is my promise to God? What is my promise to God? And our promise to God is to, is to serve him and serve him faithfully. To live the life pleasing unto him. This should be our promise. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's to keep his commandments. It should be our promise to him. Whatever he says to do, to do it, that should be our promise to God. Our promise to God is... But we, 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 but we, we, we allow him to make all the promises... All the promises, so we, 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 we are full of ourselves. And, and, and that our minds help us to understand, okay, well, God has promised us everything, so, you know, we can live that life lavishly. We don't worry. We say, soul, 
Ha, 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 ha. Soul, we have many st good stuff up for you. So eat, marry, enjoy. And you die and go to hell. You die and go to hell. What profit it is. We need to make promises to God. And we need to, we need to stand by our promises. When we make that promise to God, we need to stand by that promise. We need to stand by that promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And our final scripture, we're just going to um, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's easy to say that I, I love God. It is very easy to say I love God. That's the most famous thing Christians will say. Do you love God? Oh, yes, I go love God. I know I pray every morning. Oh, I pray every morning. I love God. Hey. Hey. But remember what the word of God says. Hey. He says, I am known by my own. <laughs> I am known by my own. That's what he says. I say, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's known by the very own. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. That's what the word of God says. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. So it's not everybody that's going to that say, I am a Christian. Or I go into church. I, I pray. He knows his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. Why? Why he know them? Because they follow him. They follow him. Children of God. My appeal to us today. Is to let go of unrighteousness. Let go of the lifestyle. The life that we are living not pleasing unto Jesus. Is to let go of that life. That old life. That dirty life. That sinful life. Is to let it go. And, 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 and hold on to Jesus. This is my appeal to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 3. Verse 3. Very short. But if anyone loves God. This one. Is known by him. You hear it? You hear that? So you ask them, do you love God? You know, Jesus loves you. Yeah, he loves me. I know he loves me. And I love him too. I love him too. Yes. It's easy to say I love him. It's very easy to say I love God. It is very easy to say I love God. But the word of God helps us to understand through, through Paul. Through Paul. He says, but if anyone loves me, loves God, if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. So everyone that says they love God, they are known by him. They are known by him. It's not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but those who does the will of my father. Those who does the will of my father. Those who does the will of my father will enter the kingdom of God. Enter the kingdom of God. Remember, children of God, it doesn't matter how much you do, how much you labor, how much, and you turn away from God, it will not be remembered. Your wickedness will not be remembered. It will not be remembered for your goodness. It will not be remembered for your goodness. So do not believe of how much you labor in. And how much you're preaching. And how much you're tithing. This is not going to help you. This is not going to help you. This is not going to help you. The word of God makes it clear that. This is not going to help you. And no one can change it. No one can change that. It's not going to help you. God has made his wonderful works to be remembered. His wonderful works to be remembered. He made it. In the same way we can remember the wonderful works of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remember that. The unrighteousness to now. Let's remember it. And let's turn to Jesus. Let's just turn to God today. Let's turn to Jesus today. Let's turn to Jesus today. The word of God is clear. It's clear. 
He's also saying if you know, he's saying when, but when a righteous man turns away from righteousness and commit iniquity and does according to the abomination of the wicked man does, shall he live? And he will die. He will not live. He will not live, children of God. He will not live. God promised. He promised in spite of that trouble, in spite of the circumstance, in spite of your day, because you know we go through day-to-day -day troubles. We go through day-to-day -day troubles. He promised, I will help you. And we, 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 we read the promises of God. That He says that I will help you. I will help you. I am saying that to say, do not run to the God of Zaffir. They cannot help you. God has promised to help us. Not to run to the God of Zaffir. They cannot help you. They cannot help you. You hear this? If they could have helped you, they would have first helped themselves. They would have helped themselves. You see, most of them living in, in little hood houses. And they're, they're, first of all, it's render renting. Render renting. And they're struggling more than you. But you're trying to bring all your money to them. They are making you poorer. They are making you poorer. But, but God promised to help us in any situation. In that situation. He said, in that situation. So you know what that situation is. You know what that situation is. I don't know. I know my situation. I know my situation. And he promised to help me. He promised to help me. So I bring my way to him. And it will come to pass. What about you? What about you? Do not give up. When the Lord say, I will help you. Do not give up. When he say, I will stand by you. I will stand by you. Do. He will do it. He will do it. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's just... Open our mouths and just give him thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give God thanks that he made many promises to us. Oh, Father, we thank you for the promises that you have made in the name of Jesus Christ. You promised to help us in time of trouble. You promised to stand with us, oh Lord. It doesn't matter the circumstance, Lord. It doesn't matter the trouble. It doesn't matter the pain. It doesn't matter the sickness, Lord. You promised to help us, Lord. To stand with us, oh Lord. You promised, oh Lord, to hold us tight with your righteous right hand, oh Lord. And never let go, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father, we say thank you, Lord. 